there's discomfort. The ability to go ahead and let that go and not get angry, drop the anger right away, is to be able to consciously be present with the pain. And when you're present with the pain, it doesn't, you don't go into a unconscious reaction into emotion. When you said about when you're being triggered, you feel it in your body. I think the awareness is not there for like for myself, speaking for myself, like the awareness hasn't been there. The basis of our control is our attention. Because our attention, we can say is our consciousness. And our consciousness, we can say is what we are directing our attention towards. Now I look at this table, now my energy and tension is on this table. Now I go into my mind and now I'm thinking of this thing, so my attention is there. So it's, it's all where we direct our attention. If you're not doing the work, it's because you're not okay with who you are. Mm. And therefore, you're judging the way that you're doing the work. Mm. But then the reason that a person would not be okay with who they are is because the emotions are inside and they haven't learned how to separate it. Okay, so we're back again with Mr. Mike Chang. And what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about how to release the tension in your body. And that tension is the negative emotions of fear, anger, worry, frustration, and sadness, and all these, all these emotions that get stored in our body. How can we release that? And why is that preventing us from actually going to the next level in our life? So let's first talk about why is that preventing us from going to the next level? Yep. And then let's talk about how to release it. Right. So it's preventing us to go to the next level because the tension in our body, it's a, the physical tightness is not allowing the emotions to be released. If we can't release the emotions of fear, we can't emo release the emotions of stress, then what happens is our mind operates in a filter of stress. Our mind operates in a filter of fear. So now imagine you're an entrepreneur and you're making decisions all the time throughout the day. Now, you want to be able to see the outcome of whether or not you succeed and whether or not if you fail so you know what you can do. Mm. Now, if you're operating, if you have fear inside of your body, if you're feeling stressed, then what stands out in your perspective is the negative outcomes, the what if it doesn't work out. Now, you know that there is positive outcomes, but they're not standing out. It takes so hard for you to sit there and really, really think, what if it does work? Instead, what pops up in your mind because of that filter in your mind, because of the emotion is, what if it doesn't work? What if it fails? What's the consequence? What if it's really bad? What will we do then? So we want to be able to see the other side as well. Now, somebody would think, I want to be super joyful and I want to be super excited. I want to feel really alive. So I want to have these positive emotions all the time. It sounds very logical, but here's what happens. Just like the same way that if somebody is experiencing stress and fear, the negative scenarios pop up. When somebody is experiencing positive emotions, the positive scenarios pop up. So what's wrong with that? So now imagine that you're an entrepreneur and that you want to make the best decisions. You want to see both sides. But now what you see is the good side all the time. What you see is, you know what, hey, we can do this, and this will work out, and this will work out, and this will work out, and this will work out. Awesome, bro, let's do it. Yeah, but what happened if one of those things don't work out? What do we do? We don't really see it. Mm. We're not even focused on it. Right. So now, now we make a lot of decisions. We said yes to a lot of things that some should have been no. Mm. We don't have backup plans. We go put all eggs in one basket. Because all we saw was the positive. So when we let go of the emotions of positive and negative, what we're left is clarity. What we're left, the way that we experience clarity in our body is peace. The way that our mind experiences it is clarity. So again, the way our body experiences this is peace, ease a general sense of centeredness, a general sense of calmness. There's a sense of balance, groundedness. There's no urge to need to do something. There's no uneasiness. There's no unpatience. There's no stress. All of those things are gone. There's just a, sen a general sense of peace. That's the experience in the body. That's the way we feel. In our mind, we're clear. So we see both the positive scenario and the negative scenario. We see all. So now, as an entrepreneur, you're making decisions. 
now you can make the best decisions. Now you know that you don't want to constantly focus on the negative, but you need to know what the negatives are in case they were to happen, you're prepared. So this is why we want to release the emotions from our body so we stop operating in filters. The second reason we want to do that is just as important as the first. First, we're just talking about making decisions. The second thing is actually implementation. So when people are needing to get ahead, the basis of it is simply just taking action. Mm. Most of the time, you find that when somebody's starting off, they may not know what they want to do and why. But once you kind of get past that, you have a business, you have your goals, you have your deadlines, you have your milestones, you have the plan. Now it's just around, it's about implementing. It's about pushing the buttons, about making the calls. But people are not doing that enough. If we look at an 18-hour day, assuming someone sleeps six hours, let's say a 17-hour day. Out of the 17 hours, let's go ahead and shave off um, four hours for uh, eating and, um, you know, kind of chilling. And then shave off another, you know, so that now we're still left with about 13 hours. Now let's shave off another three hours for downtime and hanging out. So now we're left with a nine-hour workday. Now, in a nine-hour workday, imagine how long does it take to make a call? This podcast, we're going to film for, I don't know, what, 30 minutes, 45 minutes? And then after that, there's something else we need to do. Upload the videos, cut the videos, do this thing. And then there's something else we need to do. Send a video, send a message, send this, this, and then there's something else we need to do. It's just continuous. Our ability to be able to do every one of those things and the other things that happen after that, our ability to not hesitate determines how much work we get done right? But how often do a person find that these are the things they need to do, but they don't do them? There's a sense of hesitation on the inside. There's a sense of procrastination. There's a sense of, I know I need to do it, but let me take my time. I don't really feel like doing it right now. Why is that happening? So the reason why this is happening is because when a person is doing something, they often look at what it is that they are doing and determine whether or not they're doing a good job. They determine whether or not what they did is to their expectation, to their approval. They look at these things because inside of themselves, there's this sense of needing to prove that they're doing a good job. And if they're not doing a good job, if they feel like they're not doing a good job, they're either going to not do it and practice and prepare before they actually do it. We can also call this perfectionism. But the reason why this is happening is because in their body, they're experiencing stress and fear. They're experiencing these things. So therefore, that filter in their mind is up. And when their filter in their mind is up, not only does it stand out the negative scenarios of what it is that they do, but it also allows them to look at their work and go, what part of it is not good enough? What part of it could be better? Mm. So therefore, they're constantly looking at their work and they are judging how they're doing things. They're looking at the way they are, the way they show up. They're looking at the way they talk, the way they do everything. And they're looking at it with this stressful, this fearful perspective. So are these all signs that they have trapped emotions in their body because they're seemingly struggling to get ahead because they're procrastinating. These are all signs that maybe there's something deeper there. These are all signs of trapped emotions. Mm -hmm. Trapped emotions is what's happening in the body, but because the body and mind are the same. So what's happening on the mind side is not being okay with who they are at their moment, at that moment in time, Mm. but it's all happening simultaneously. They're not, they're not separate. If somebody, is, if somebody has trapped emotions in their body, then they cannot be okay with who they are. Not unless they have done a tremendous amount of inner work. So to the fact that they have stopped reaction, the reaction to pain, the reaction to discomfort. You know, like you heard about, like, uh, there's a story of like the, the Buddhist monk that sat while he was on fire in the middle of the city to to um, to stand for peace, you know, they set him on fire and he just sat there. 
that's an example of, you know, you, you can read about it. If you type it in, it'll show up. I think Vice covered it. Different places covered it. That's crazy. But it, it basically, and you know, then there's people that show different demonstrations of pain. Yeah. And it's not that they're not feeling the pain. They are feeling the pain. Um, some of them have developed levels of energy or levels of chi that pushes out, that, that, that protects their body. But what we're talking about is simply the fact that if we physically feel uncomfortable, which stress feels uncomfortable, anger feels uncomfortable, all these things, fear feels uncomfortable. If we can not have that react into emotion, if it can simply stay as pain, if it can simply stay as discomfort, if somebody looks into it deep enough, they'll find that anytime before they are emotionally triggered, there's discomfort happening. It's in their body somewhere. But that discomfort automatically triggers emotion. And then the emotion automatically triggers the thought, that perspective. So now the perspective in their mind of bad things are happening or what negative scenario do I need to look, look out for or watch out for, then that produces more emotions and then now they're stuck in the loop. But if they were to just consciously feel the discomfort in their body when it happened, they can stop the reaction into emotion. Like, let's say, here's a real life example. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to punch you really hard in the thigh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And let's say I'm a really good puncher, so it's going to hurt like crazy. Yeah. Now, at this point, your thigh is throbbing with pain. Yeah. Right? You know how that feels. Going up your thigh, your right. knees is aching, and all this stuff. Yeah. Now, if you had really good control, you sit there, you're in pain, but consciously, you're still clear it didn't trigger any discomfort it didn't trigger any irritation so that's just a random example that we can separate pain by itself to emotion so therefore we're always operating in clarity because when somebody has a stomach ache when a woman's going through her month there's discomfort when we are feeling sick there's discomfort when someone says something to you and it upsets you instantly there's discomfort in your body the ability to go ahead and let that go and not, and not get angry, drop the anger right away, is to be able to consciously be present with the pain. And when you're present with the pain, it doesn't, you don't go into an unconscious reaction into emotion. Now it's just pain. But you're still centered. You can still make decisions, clear decisions, not react and make emotional decisions. Yeah, because that's... <laughs> When you said about when you're being triggered, you feel it in your body. I think the awareness is not there for, like, for myself, speaking for myself, like, the awareness hasn't been there. You know, I'm not aware of, like, oh, I'm feeling this in my body. That's why I'm getting triggered. Right. It's not, I don't have that mechanism. Then, then we go back to the, how do, we, how do we feel that? Which is the same thing as how do we release the emotions from the body? How do we re release the, uh, the fear? Well, we need to build the sensitivity. Another way to say it is we need to learn how to take our attention and we need to bring it into the body and we need to hold it into the body. It's like, imagine like, let's say we put up a, you know, you put up a hand right here, let's say a finger, and let's look at the tip of the finger and we just stare at it. Now, if we stare at it for five, 10 seconds, no big deal. But let's say we had to stare at it for 30 minutes, you know? The ability for somebody to go ahead and stare at it for 30 minutes without looking away, without blinking, without feeling bored and all this stuff shows the ability that they can control their attention, for example. Now, they can come up with all kinds of reasons in their mind, but if they set the intention to look at it and somehow they convince themselves in their mind not to, that means they lack the ability to. Just like if somebody says, I want to accomplish this goal in my business, and then four days later they change their mind. Most of the time, it's because it's not really because they don't want to accomplish the goal. It's because they were afraid. They ran into some obstacle, and they decided, I'm going to, I can't handle it. Not because they really don't want to accomplish it. They still want to. Somebody wants to go and get in shape. And then suddenly, after a week and a half, they go, what happened? Oh, well, you know, I decided to cheat. No, you didn't decide to cheat. You just, you couldn't stay on a diet. It's not a choice. You know, you didn't, you, you didn't have control over yourself. Right. This control aspect of us, we can call it mental discipline, we can call it um, habits, 
But the basis of all of this, the basis of our control is our attention. Because our attention, we can say, is our consciousness. And our consciousness, we can say, is what we are directing our attention towards. If I look at you, my consciousness is on you, then my energy is towards you. Now I look at this table, now my energy and attention is on this table. Now I go into my mind, and now I'm thinking of this thing, so my attention is there. So now I bring my attention in my body, now my attention is here. Mm. So it's, it's all where we direct our attention. And where our attention goes is where our energy goes, and it's, it's what forms our reality. It's what we are aware of. You know, so if we want to feel our body, we need to learn how to take our attention and bring it into the body and keep it there. Just like how we keep our attention in our work for 30 minutes so we can knock out this task. We keep our attention in our body for 30 minutes so we can fully feel this emotion. And then when we can fully feel it, now this emotion, number one, we are able to let go of the body. Because how do we know if we're even tight in the body? Right? We need to bring our attention there and go, wow, I'm, I'm tight. So we leave our attention there and slowly we, we start to loosen the body. And now we know whether or not the body's loose because we are paying attention to the way the body feels. We can tell the body lets go. We can tell when it tightens. So now the body's letting go 30 minutes later. And now we're fully feeling this emotion. So then now from here, it's like, okay, I'm feeling this emotion. So now from here, as we feel the emotion, the emotion starts to rise. We start to feel it more. Because in the beginning, when we feel it, we're just feeling the tip. We're just feeling a little bit of it. But the emotion's like really deep. It's like a splinter to where you can only capture the head of it and as you start to pull it out the rest of it starts to come out because the emotion has been lodged in our body for a long time just because we got triggered right now doesn't mean that this emotion of anger is new it's been around for a long time so it sounds like this is why so many people like they're chronically tight or they they're just a certain way that they're angry all the time or maybe they just struggle with actually focusing because they have all these uh, trapped emotions in their body that are preventing them from, you know, loosening up their body. Like they've got this ch chronic back pain, you know, all these problems. Yeah, and they don't know exactly what to do because everybody's so general with this. Everybody's like, what do you do? Oh, you know, you just, uh, you know, just accept it. Accept the emotions? Yeah, you know, just accept it. How? Mm. Oh, you know, just recognize it and accept it. What does that mean? mean because mm. yes technically because what we're doing is accepting it right we talk about feeling it and all but what does it actually mean what are they meaning if you ask them they go well you know be aware that the emotion is there and then accept it be okay you see it's so general it doesn't work if it's that general it's like if we're if you're an entrepreneur and you want to go and make 50 grand a month what do you do oh you know just you know just go uh, uh, send some traffic Okay, well, what do I do? You know, you know just, just make some content. You know, it doesn't work. Right. You got to get very, very specific. And this is just as detailed, if not infinitely more. So when a person takes their attention and they bring it into their body and they hold their attention long enough so the tension in their body starts to relax, now they start to feel the energy. They just start. didn't mean they're feeling the energy because they just did this. Now the body's relaxed. Until then, their body was tight, so they couldn't even, they can't even feel the energy because they're just at the body level, the physical level. So now the, the physical level relaxes. Now they start to feel the energy. Now this energy starts to rise. They're able to feel the feeling more. But now let's say their body tightens up because something happens and then they lost the attention in their body. They got into their mind. Body tightens up, cuts the energy off. You lost feeling of the energy. The body tightened up, so now the body's not relaxed anymore, so you can't even feel the energy because the body's too tight already. So now, if you want to come back, you have to relax the body again and then see if you can find the energy again. So you may not be able to feel it this time. Mm. See, so people aren't doing that. And if they were to try to do this, what they will run into is the first one. How, how can I let go? I'm trying to let go of my body, but my body is doing this right now. How do I let it go? It's like, okay, so first we need to go from here to here. We need to, re we need to teach it how to let go. And then once we teach it how to let go, then we need to teach them how to direct their attention into the body. Into the body and become aware of this emotion. How do they become aware of that? How do they overcome the distractions? What's the process? How does it feel like? So this way they know that they're sitting there for this hour trying to do this, that they're doing it right. 
you know, what is the outcome in their life when they're doing this? Because it's not like they do this and then they stop and everything goes back to normal. It's, things change then. When somebody relaxes their body, things are already changing. And then when they start to bring their attention to the emotion, their state of being is changing. And this is affecting their work. This is affecting their relationship. This is accessing memories and thoughts and perspectives that they weren't accessing before. How do you deal with that? If they don't know what to do, then they're going to run back to how they were because this is unknown. And if their friends around them don't know what to do, can't give them advice, they're dealing with it every single day. It's not like, hey, you know, I'll, I'll check with you next month. No, I need an answer right now because right now I'm very, very confused. I'm, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening. And uh, this is really scary, even though I think I'm doing the right thing, but I really have no idea. And so all of this stuff takes, takes time and it takes support. And if somebody doesn't have it, they either can't do it or even if they're on the right track, they won't know it and they won't continue. Like somebody who's getting ready for a bodybuilding competition and they're super flat and someone says, just keep going. You sure? Because I look like I'm getting really thin. But they don't realize <laughs> that the moment when they carb up the last three days, boom, they suddenly gain 7, 10 pounds. But somebody who doesn't know that or somebody who is leaning down goes, Aaron, you sure I'm doing the right thing? Because I feel like I'm getting really skinny right now and I'm getting very weak. And God, I, I worked forever to gain these muscles. And now I'm doing this diet and I lost my gains that I've been training my butt off for the last six months. You sure I need to keep my calories this low? You sure? You go, yes, man, trust me. But, and they're going to ask you not once. They're going to keep asking you right. for, for confirmation because they need it. And this is just on physical. Now we're talking about emotional and mental states. It's, they're going to need constant um, confirmations and constant support until they have done it a good amount of times. Then they go, okay, I've been through this process. Yeah, so this is really fascinating because the emotions, the emotional side of things is why we, like it's like I think about it, it's like sometimes I sit down and I'm like, all right, focus, right? But sometimes there's, there's reasons why I can't do the work. And going into that, I'm like, oh, what's the reasons why I can't do the work? It's because of the emotions that are getting in the way of me doing the work. It's like how I feel about myself is showing up to do the work. So if I don't feel good, I won't be producing well, right? So we have to re release these emotions. If you're not doing the work, it's because you're not okay with who you are. Mm. And therefore, you're judging the way that you're doing the work. Mm. But then the reason that a person would not be okay with who they are is because the emotions are inside and they haven't learned how to separate it. Once they learn how to, they can be feeling bad on the inside, but on the outside, they are fine with who they are. There's no needing to prove. But until somebody gets past that, the needing to prove themselves through their work, through every action that they do, is accompanied by the fear-based emotions inside. So if somebody goes, all right, Aaron, I'm going to work on now, being okay with who I am. I'm going to accept myself. Great. So they keep telling themselves, I accept myself, I accept myself, I'm okay with what I'm doing. So they may have accomplished that, let's say, at level one thoughts, their conversational thoughts, the internal dialogue that a person is aware of in their mind. But level two thoughts, at the level of whisper, they have not, that thought is not aligned. That thought is, I'm still not enough. I need to prove it. I need to still be better. I need to get better. I need to get ahead. If I really want to make in this life, I need to get ahead. I think I, I, I've had that my whole life. Like that, that whole, like, I need to get better. That's like my, probably about my biggest story about myself. It's like, yeah. I, need to get, I need to improve. I need to get better. I don't think there's anything wrong with improve, needing to improve. Right? It's where, where it comes from, right? That's what you're saying. Well, if you think about it, right? If, if we want to improve, aren't we saying that we're not good enough? <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. But then, but then the other question is, there's some people in the audience who are watching, or I know they were asked this, what's the bad thing about not being good enough? Just get good enough. Right. So what's the bad thing of not being good enough? If you are conscious of yourself not being good enough, how would you act? Would you act confident? Fake it till you make it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what's the difference between somebody who's faking confidence while somebody who's really tell. confident? You can tell. Yeah. You can see through it. Right. Same thing with self-belief, hmm. faking self-belief and actually believing oneself, faking self-trust versus actually trusting oneself and et cetera. Hmm. 
you can't fake it is only going to it's only going to it's all for show but inside of us going back to earlier if we have things that we need to do and inside we are trying to fake it so we're forcing ourselves to do these things because we're not okay with how we're doing things we're judging every action but we're going to fake it and pretend like it's okay with ourselves so how do we how do we pretend like it's okay even though it's not okay how do we continue to move forward? And the answer is we got to force ourselves to do, to, to move forward. So now forcing takes a lot of energy. If you got this task and this task is 10 units of energy, well, if you had to force yourself, if you didn't have to force, it would take 10 units of energy to accomplish this 10 unit task. But let's say you got to force yourself. So you got 50 units inside that is saying, no, 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 this is so bad. I need to be better. I, I'm not good enough as it is. And you got to overcome that so you can knock out this 10-unit ener- task. So you have to come up with 60 units of energy to do this 10-unit task because mm-hmm. 50 of it is overcoming yourself. 10 units is actually doing the task. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you ever, <laughs> have you guys ever experienced it where you're like, you're doing something that's like so simple, but it's like it takes so much of you just to go and prepare to just <laughs> do this little thing. And you're like procrastinating. I don't know. You're getting up and, and grabbing a cup of coffee and you want to take a break and you want to prepare. You want to be in your best state just so you can do this thing that takes 10 minutes. That's what happens. We generate so much time and energy. We waste so much of it just to do something that doesn't take actually that much time and energy. But the extra time and energy and all that time wasted was actually spent to be okay with ourselves. Or in other words, to get into a state so we can force ourselves to do it. Hmm. When we eliminate that, now we implement fast, very fast, lightning speed fast. The amount of time that somebody has will now be spent on implementation. It will be actually spent on working, not spent on trying to get themselves to be okay with the work they're doing. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not even about being smarter. Right. It's, it's really not about being smarter. It's not yeah. about knowing more. All those things will happen naturally. You know, if somebody thinks about this idea of not needing to approve, the first thing they think is, well, well, Aaron, how would I improve? Like, don't yeah. I need to improve so I can level up? Right. You know, I said, build a bigger business. I mean, and look at have, these guys. I wouldn't have any drive either. Any right. hunger. Right. You know, what would get me to want to go ahead and do better if I don't give a shit, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a good question. The way that we improve was never about wanting to improve. Mm. The way we actually improve is when we do the work. When we take some action, we improve. If we don't take action, we can sit and talk about improving and we never improve. So therefore, improvement has nothing to do with the desire to improve. Mm. Improvement has to do with the action. Either we take action or we don't. If we take action, we improve. It's inevitable. We always improve. Even if we don't try to improve, if you keep doing the action over and over and over, you'll improve. Like last time we did the podcast here, right? The setup wasn't the same. You got these badass, got a badass camera now, two badass cameras. You didn't have those last time. Right. Didn't matter. You're like, I'm just going to start with what I got. And now the setup changed. Yeah. It improved. Right. It improved because you kept doing this, right? And even the way we're talking right now is different than last time. I remember. So... The improvement happens naturally. The second question is, well, what's going to give me the drive to want to do it if I'm not doing it for myself? Let's think about that question. Let's make it really obvious. Hmm. Why would you do something if you don't do it for yourself? Who could you possibly do it for if you don't do it for yourself? I think when we position it like that, we make the answer stand out a little more. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you know, there's other people <laughs> out mm. there that might need your help. And to really reframe that, there's other people that desperately is needing your help. That's the answer. People have so much value that they can give. The products that they're making, the services that they're making, the skill sets, the talent, the inspiration, their experience, their wisdom, all of these things. They can help other people. Other people need it. So when they stop focusing on themselves because they're fine, they don't need to improve, they don't need to be better, they don't need to prove that they're good, let that go. You're fine the way you are at this moment now. 
So now what do you do? You go help other people. You help other people with your skill sets and with your talent, with whatever product and service that you have that you're bringing to the world. Focus on how to give your customer more value. And now that drives you to take those actions that you need to take. Write those emails and make those calls and put up those landing pages and drive the traffic. And then how do you improve? By keep doing the work and then you'll improve. And every aspect of what you're doing will improve. Right, so that's a different focus there, isn't it? It's like I'm, I'm going to focus on giving what I have versus I'm going to focus on doing that so that I can get more status, get, no, get more notoriety, prove to these people or maybe my parents that I'm good enough. You know, that's the different motivation. Coming from a different place. Yeah. Accomplishing the same goal, but coming from a different place. Yeah, so on the outside, it looks really similar, mm -hmm. right? Somebody looks like they're doing the same thing in the beginning. But as they make the switch and they start doing it this way, what actually happens is the way they do things, their decisions start to change. Because it's very different when you're making a decision to help yourself versus making a decision to actually take care of your customer. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to have certain amount of resources. We need to have certain amount of, of energy coming back to us in the, in the form of money, in the form of connection, in the form of something, so this way we can give back. But we are not the end goal. It's still the customers that we're serving. It's still the cause that we're improving. So therefore, what we do, the way we set it up, the way we deliver it, what we say, the amount of attention and where we place it in our business changes completely. And you can tell when you look at a business when they really care about customers. You can tell that in the customer experience right in the beginning, the way you interact with the people, the way the landing pages looks, all the way to everything. You can tell they really thought about what the experience was and they, know, and they think, what would the customer think in this point? Let's do this. What would the customer need at this point? Let's do that. What about in this end? Let's do that. What happens if they have problems? Let's do that. What are something they don't like? This. How can we solve that? This has nothing to do with making more money. If they had to make more money, they think about how do I drive more traffic and how do I convert the customers to get them to buy and deliver the product, repeat, scale. But somebody that thinks about the rest of this stuff, they weren't just focused on making more money because making more money is the other route. Will they make more money? Eventually, probably yes. They may not, but there's a good chance. Why? Well, because they have happier customers, longer retention rates, you know, better testimonials and reviews. Their brand improves because customers are actually being taken care of, you know. But you see, they don't focus. That's not the primary goal. The primary goal is taking care of customers. So now when someone does increase their traffic, increase, and they do help more people, it's because they want to help more people. So they have to go ahead and upgrade their equipment. They have to go ahead and hire more people and scale their softwares and systems. So this way they can reach out and help more people that need their product and services. We see that the, the attention changes and they feel satisfied. There's a sense of fulfillment. There's a real sense of purpose versus this emptiness that many entrepreneurs that you and I may know are doing just fine money-wise, but they lack this sense of inner fulfillment because they keep doing it for themselves and at some point they don't need any more and they know it so they just start blowing money on random stuff and there's only so much that they can blow before it's like they know it's just bs like there's got to be something more and they may start to look into charity and all this stuff just trying to give shit away because they don't know how to really make the change and focus and, on and customers that subconscious as well like i i did that like i was just blowing money because I was just yeah it's just I just felt unfulfilled in my life and I was just blowing money it's like oh I can spend money on this and that oh cool buy that <laughs> people go through stages it's not a it's not a bad thing everybody goes through these stages in yeah. the beginning people are are working their butt off to prove mm. to prove themselves right they're proving themselves to their parents and to society and the people that didn't believe in them and then at some point they start to wake up and they go shit I don't need to prove myself anymore all right, so there's no point. You know what? I'm not going to go do things for my parents. I'm not going to do things for those people that didn't believe in me. I'm going to do things for myself. So what do I care about? You know what? I don't care about this. I don't care about that. I want to travel. I want to go do my shit. I want to go do whatever I want. So then they stop being in the grind, right? This, this is when you start to see them do stuff like van life, and you start seeing them go travel, and they start to take on different passions, and it's not about the money anymore. It's about doing what they want still self-centered, right? The first one, self-centered. Why? Because they are needing to prove 
things to themselves. Second one, self-centered because they're doing it for themselves now and not for other people. Now, at some point, they go, you know what? I'm filled because my glass was really empty for a while because I was just trying to prove it to other people. Now that I'm doing things for myself and I've been filling up myself, I feel fulfilled. So now, what do I do? I don't care to do things for myself anymore because I'm just fine. There's nothing I need to prove. I'm past that. I've done everything that I really wanted for myself. Now, let me see what contribution can I make to other people. So then now, they get back into the grind again. But it's different this time. They're not doing it to prove. They're doing it to actually help other people. They're doing it for service. Mm. Now, on the outside, it looks like it's the same thing. This person is working their butt off and doing all this stuff. But if you get into the inner circle, if you get into their world, you realize that there's a sense of attention to taking care of customers. There's very, very little ego in the way that they work. You see that the teams operate in a type of synergy to where people aren't being put down. People have a voice because the top person on the top is doing it for a different cause now. They're doing it to actually serve people. So it trickles down. The culture is different. They don't just take care of their customers. They actually take care of their team members as well versus people trying to squeeze every dime from their customers and squeeze every ounce of work from their team, right? And creating golden handcuffs left and right so this way people can't leave. So, but on the outside, when we are looking in, it really looks like there's only two things going on. Either people are working or not working. But in reality, that's the change that people go through. And so all the people out there right now that are kind of taking a break, doing what they want, they're in that middle stage. That middle stage can be months or it could be years. There's no, there's no telling. I have no idea. But at some point, that's not where somebody will stay. When they want to progress, they will go into the next stage. But some people may take a long, long, long time. They may go, I'm going to just kind of coast in life because I don't, I've done the grind and I'm just going to coast in life and do what I want. So then that's when they go ahead and do very, very little, make little money, but they cut down their expenses. Life is really, really, really simple, right? It's the type of people that live here in Bali. Some people live in Thailand and all these places. And then they coast for a little while, get a little place on the beach or something, a little hut, and they're just kind of chilling, right? Drinking coconuts and hanging out by the water. Life is good. But they're also not doing much for anybody else. When they really want to get to the next stage in evolution for themselves is when they stop thinking about themselves. And they go, I'm enough already. I don't need to think about myself. I don't need to prove it to myself. I don't need to be any better. I don't need any more. My cup has overfilled big time. And with this all overfilled of energy, talent, and service, I need to direct this energy and go help other people. And when somebody is in that stage, now the way that they show up will be very, very different. And part of what I do is to kind of help somebody just kind of look at that and realize that this is the stage that they're in. And ultimately, I only teach people two things now. And the one thing is to be okay with who they are. Wherever stage that they're at, they need to figure this out and also to teach them how to release emotions inside. So this way they can be okay with who they are. They can mm. take out that perspective. And, and it sounds like this, this is a constant practice, right? So what, can you talk more about what you teach people in your program? So the first thing we do is on the level of the body is we talk about letting go of the tension. So I teach people how to do the practice to actually let go of the tension. It's not just like doing the moves because there are seven training principles to apply. If somebody doesn't apply the training, training principles, then they're only getting partial benefits. They're not able to go deeper. There are three layers. And I say three layers because we can come up with 20 in reality. We can just make it up. But I just divide it into three so it's simpler to grasp. And most people are just at the surface of the first layer. Even when they do the flow practice, they only get to clearing the first layer. They can't go any deeper. Deeper layers involve having to take attention all the way down versus physically doing the movements. The movements will only go so far. The rest of it has to do with attention. So what they learn, what they expect is doing practice every day, twice a day. For some people, they can do it. For other people, it's like, holy crap, I can't even do practice like twice a week. Yeah. Right? So then when I'm working with them, I'm telling them, I'm like, look, I do the calls right now personally. I don't know how long that's going to last, but as of right now, at this moment, I'm interviewing each person. And I do it because I tell them, like, look, I, I could be spending my time doing a lot of other things that have so many things to do. 
But I want to ensure that when someone enrolls in the program that they have the capacity to finish. If not, I'm not going to enroll them because what's the point? You know, the easy part is enrollment. The hard part is actually finishing because somebody's got to have a level of commitment. When they are dealing with stuff that's coming up and it doesn't feel good, they need to go, why am I doing this? Like, why is this important? Why am I doing this now? Why, why would I not just wait another few years and just kind of be okay? Why am I doing this now? Oh, right, because I want to get past running away from my fears. Why? So I can fully show up. Why? Because I'm tired of being scared. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of uh, playing small. And they need to have that focus in their mind. They need to be clear. But I can't create that why for them. So when I do these calls with them, I help people identify what it is that they really want to do and why is it so important. And then once we have that, then we dive in. It's like, okay, then we talk about the rest of the program. And the rest of the program has to do with the level of the mind, where when they are working on being okay with who they are, there's a lot of situations that they're having to deal with because people are judging themselves as much as they breathe. <laughs> that's a good quote. <laughs> that's, it's, that's how often they're doing it. When yeah. I ask people, they go, you do it? And I go, yeah, they do. I do it sometimes. And I go, no, you do it as often as you breathe. You just are maybe catching it on the level one. Yeah, sometimes. Level two, most of the times. Level three, it doesn't stop. It's continuous. Literally continuous. The way you see everything is, is that. So what we do on the level of the mind is we help somebody to be able to, for example, number one, increase their level of awareness so they can get to level two thoughts. And they can get to level three thoughts. Like right now in a class, we're about six weeks in. we got about two more weeks left. We're now working on level two and level three thoughts because they're past level one thoughts ready. Mm. But then now the things we're doing are a lot more subtle. So this way, if they can identify these deeper level thoughts, they can identify the judgments in it. And they can also start to see how does their awareness switch? What's the switch? Because a switch happens at level three. Whispers happen at level two. Dialogue happens at level one. You see, most people aren't, they're not aware of any of these things, but yet this is happening with every human being. And people wonder why they're not getting the results. Well, because they haven't actually looked at what's really going on inside them. Everything is so general. Just be grateful, Aaron, and everything will be just fine. No, it doesn't work that way. Just go ahead and just feel the emotions. No, it's not by choice. Just like we go, hey, Aaron, let's go become a ballet dancer. Let's go ballet dance. I don't know about you, but I can't ballet dance, you know. It's not by choice. We have to practice and we have to train. If we don't do the work, we can't, we can't do it. So that's what we do. We do the work every, you know, every week. We meet three times a week. We meet for two hours at least every single time. So I'm pretty much seeing everybody like every other day almost. We're chatting almost every day in the group for 60 days. They're sending in proof of practices. They have to send in that they did the work. I don't care if you say you're going to do the work. Great. Now show me mm. every day. And if you don't, if I don't see it, you're going to get a call from me. My, my assistant, Andy, will, will send you a message. You know, and we're going to check up. And then they're going to give me their excuse. And I'll be like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, you have the flu. Right. Now go do practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got people that tell me that right yeah, now. Yeah. And I go, right, I'm so, yes, you don't have to do the whole practice, but you can breathe and meditate. Mm. Because what, well, you're not going to breathe because you had the flu. No, you're going to breathe. Meditation, all that is is being still. You're very still when you have the flu. I'm, I'm sure you're not running around much. So the only actual thing you have to do is direct attention. That's what I'm asking you to do. Do it for five minutes. You've got 24 hours in a day. You can do it for five minutes. I don't care if you have the flu. If you're in this program, you're going to do the work. If not, if you don't want to do the work, go, go watch some YouTube videos. Go join someone else's program. Mm. But this program is for real people that are ready for real transformations. Mm. Because I've been in the game too long, man. And so many people are offering things that don't work. Mm. I didn't come back into, into this world. I, I was about to go into farming. <laughs> I was about really? to become a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> I, own, I own a current farm in Philippines right oh, wow. now. Yeah, wow. most people don't know that. You know, I was going to get into farming because I want to get into the dirt and I don't care about social media and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I came back because I actually, I realized what I know needs to be spread. And I can't just go and talk to plants all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'm... So, so, so lastly, <laughs> so uh, real quick before we wrap it up, what are the results that people see and 
why should they get involved? So the results that they'll see is number one, they're going to learn how to be more relaxed. They're going to catch reactions, unconscious reactions they used to do. They start to catch all of them. They start to change their belief systems about the way they used to do things, the needing to prove about things, the need to be right, the need to be understood. They stop the reactions. They stop these unconscious beliefs. They also start to become a lot more calm. They can let go of a lot of the stuff that used to bother them. Their relationship improves because they're not so fearful to go ahead and be intimate, either with their loved ones, with their love partners, in their business relationships. They kind of get past this transactional type of relationship and actually talk to and connect to their team members as people. It's a, it's a big thing. And they have more confidence. They stop second-guessing themselves so much. Can they go from totally in fear to complete inner peace and Zen mode in 60 days? Honestly, most people, probably not. But what they will learn is, number one, the strategies of how to get to the end. Number two, most important, what is the end look like? What do they need to aim for? What do they need to spend their time on? Because there's so many things in inner development. And they stop wasting time on everything else, and they practice only what is needed to get to that very end to where they're accomplishing these two things. So they, get, they go in a straight line to there. There's not new things that they need to learn. They just need to practice what they have learned and continue to practice it. And I do offer ongoing support after 60 days for the people that really, that really want to continue. So this way, they can work with me for another year. You know, so they don't have to just be on their own because they're, they don't find enough people out there that, are, that understand this, that are teaching in this way. Everybody's too general, so they don't get anywhere. Yeah, and the, the accountability is really important, right? Like to help someone to doing what they say they're going to do is what most people need. Because like, they can watch your videos so they're blue in the face, yeah. but they've got to actually do the work. Yeah, we're so big yeah. on, we're, we're really big on that. We're yeah. really big on actually one last thing, which is implementing the way that they learn these things. It's not like they take notes and they go, okay, all right, I'm going to study this, I'm going to memorize this process, and then I'm going to sit here and I'm going to practice it. No. You're going to memorize this process, great, and then now you're going to go to work, you're going to go live your life, and then you're going to go and apply these things. The moment you get triggered, the moment you're reacting, the moment you're judging, the moment you're feeling these things, you're going to apply what you learned, and either you're going to succeed or you're going to fail. And if you succeed, great, let me know. If you fail, great, let me know. And, find, and let me know what problem you ran into. So this way I can give you feedback. And then you're going to take that feedback and you're going to do it again. And again, and again, and again. And then when you get good at that, good. Now you apply something else. So now they're taking what they're learning and they're actually applying it to everyday life. And when I do the interviews with people, I find out what are your goals? What is it specifically that you want to accomplish? And what is the time frame to accomplish it? List it out. And then with this list... I go, okay, so you need to knock these things out in the next three days. Okay, go do it. Let's, I'm going to check in with you on three days. And three days from now, if they didn't do it, I go, tell me your lame excuse. They're going to tell me their lame excuse, and I'm going to tell them, right. So what are these, what's really going on? And they go, um, all right, so then they tell me the real reason, which is I was afraid, I got scared, um, I had self-doubt. Right, not all of the other lame excuses. You see, people are starting to, they recognize the bullshit, and they go, right, they stop lying to themselves and then they go okay mike but how do i overcome it try this they try and then they do it again and either they succeed and then knock out their task and they're moving forward or they procrastinate and they fail and then they tell me i couldn't do it i go what happened this is how learning should be this is how people are actually moving forward in their life not doing some practice in a nice peaceful room and then going outside and not actually applying what it is they're learning. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. People think they need to finish a program before they actually apply it. No, this program is done to where the moment you enroll, you're already doing the things that you're supposed to be doing now. So therefore, you're already overcoming fear. You're already applying things that you're learning. So this way, I want you to go ahead and fail and fall flat on your face. So this way, you can tell me about it because that's how people get better. People are so scared that they want to do perfection when they apply. But no, you need to get good at falling down and getting back up. And so therefore, that's what people are experiencing. They're experiencing going out there and constantly failing and falling down. And sometimes they get up and they don't fall. And sometimes they keep falling. But they start to build resiliencies. They start to learn how to get up faster.
that's how they actually learn this program. And so the practices and all this stuff is applying to everyday life when they're doing things. When they're triggered on the spot, what do you do? If we're sitting here having a conversation, suddenly I get stressed and upset, but I can't leave this conversation because we're having to talk right now, what do I do? And if a student was to ask me that, I will tell them, here's what you do. There are a handful of things that somebody can do at this moment right now in this position that nobody will even see them doing it, and they're doing it. And then therefore, they're letting it go. So this way, we start to apply this practice into real everyday life situations, which is when emotions actually get triggered. They don't get triggered when somebody's chilling by themselves. They get triggered when people are engaging in life. Wow. Powerful stuff. So we'll, leave, we'll end it there. And if guys, if you want to get access to Mike's program, just click the link below this video. Or if you're on uh, the, this podcast, where, where should they go? Oh, there, there's a link. There's a link. I'll, put, I'll make a link. Just go to AaronDarko.com. And uh, yeah, I'll make a redirect. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks, Mike, for coming on. Appreciate it as always. Thank you very much for blessing us with your wisdom. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. All right. right. See See you guys.